I'm George Pearson and in this Photoshop Elements video we'll be making this multicolor mosaic portrait. Now when you finish watching the video if you enjoy this make sure that you subscribe to my channel and also please click that like button that thumbs up so that everybody will know that you've enjoyed this video. Also if you want to get complete training for Photoshop Elements make sure to check out the links for my Amazon titles and also my website which you'll find in the description and on the channel. Okay, let's take a look and see how this project is put together. We have several layers here. I'm just going to hide a whole bunch of this stuff and then we'll see what we've got. We start off with a basic portrait like this and you may want to use a levels control to adjust your values. I normally wait until I have the colors on before I do that so I can match my values to the coloration. Above that we convert this into black and white. Let me just hide this mask here for a second. There we go, I'll hide that one as well. So a black and white version that allows us to have some color and some black and white. Above that we have our coloration in here and this is blended in using a different blending mode. There are several different blending modes you can use on this. We just go ahead and blend that in. Now we use these layer masks in here to control which parts of the image are showing through to your color order the black and white. Above that we have some additional white squares and above that we have our lines. Okay, I'm going to minimize this. We'll come back and look at this a little bit for examples as we go. Let's start off with a brand new file. Go up to File, New, and Blank File. Now we need to put in a grid to create our color grid in here. And to do that real easy, what I did was I set up a file which is 8 inches by 8 inches, just a square 8 by 8 with a resolution of 300. And the reason I did 8 by 8 is that allows me to put in guidelines that will make this 8 squares across and 8 squares down. Choose OK. And there we go, just a basic file like that. Now we need to have our grid lines in here. We'll do that next. Go to the View menu. And since this is 8 inches wide, 8 inches tall, I can put in new guides at the 1 inch mark. It makes it real easy. So, new guide. Do our horizontals first. Just type in 1 for 1 inch. And just keep on doing this to put in our guides. Do a 2. And then view new guide 3. View new guide 4. View new guide 5. View new guide 6 and then view new guide 7 and that finishes off the horizontal guides. Okay, view new guide. Let's change this to vertical now and back down here type in 1 for 1 inch. There's our vertical and same thing. New guide 2. That was the wrong one. That was 3. That's okay. We can back up one here and do 2. There it is. 1, 2, 3. View new guide 4. View new guide 5 view new guide 6 and finally view new guide 7 and that gives us our basic grid structure. Okay let's now place our image in here so I'll go up to file and we'll use place and here we go several different pictures I've used in some of my other videos I just grab this one here and choose place. Now it comes in fitting on the images you can see right there now I need to stretch this up so it's the right size and when you're working with a placed image, you have to hold the shift key down to change the size. If you're just using an image that's on a layer inside of Photoshop Elements, you don't hold the shift key down. It will automatically be proportional. But if it's a placed image, make sure you hold that shift key down when you make this adjustment. Okay, I'll just grab our corners here. Let's pull that out. I want to pull it out enough so that I have the eyes in two different squares, just like this. They're kind of off in two different squares just size wise choose OK and then I'll bring over here just a little bit and I'll use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move things around just a touch I want to have that one left left side eye the right her right eye just enough into that one grid square over there okay that's pretty good I could go there or I could go over here a little bit but I think the Composition is better if she's just right about there. It's a little off center, a little odd, but the eyes are in better position for the grid. 
Okay, there we go. Let me check our our height. That's pretty nice. So we have this side is in this square, this side is in this square, the nose is in its own square, and the mouth pretty much is in one square. That'll help out the composition. So there's the basic image. Let's now duplicate this layer. Just copy that up here. There we go. Let's convert this new layer to black and white. Real easy one here. Enhance, convert to black and white. It's a smart layer. Whenever you place a layer or an image into Photoshop Elements, it comes in as a smart layer, unless you turn that off, which you're able to do in Photoshop Elements 15, but all the rest of the versions, you can't, do, you can't turn that off, so I'll lift that on. So just choose OK, and then choose the effect that you want. You have several basic settings down here, infrared, newspaper, portrait, scenic landscape, urban, and vivid. The one you choose will depend upon which view you like the best. It looks like urban and portraits are almost exactly the same. You just want to get a good black and white conversion. You can come down here and make more adjustments if you want to, but I think this looks just fine. Choose OK. OK, we have our color. We have our black and white. Now comes the most time-consuming part of this whole project, and that's doing that color grid. I'll show you how it's done. I'll do the first row up here on this. I won't bother doing the rest. Once you see how I do it, it's just a matter of going through and doing all the rest. It took me about an hour to decide on the colors to use for that whole thing. And I know you don't want to sit here watching for a whole hour as I place colors into grids. So let's just do the top row on this one. Start off with a new file, or new layer rather, right there. New layer, layer 1. Go over and grab the rectangular marquee tool. Go up to View and Snap To. Make sure that Snap To Guides is checked. If it's not, just click on that to make sure that's checked. And now come in on the intersection right here of these two lines, horizontal and vertical. Click and drag, and that will give you a selection right at that spot. Let's go down to our colors down here, or even easier, let's make this as easy as possible. Let's bring up the color swatches. There we go. Here's all of our color swatches. These are at the default swatches in here. You can choose any spectrum that you want to use. I'll just stick with the defaults. Let's choose red as our foreground color. Go to the paint bucket and just click inside there. There's our red square and there it is on our first layer. Okay, let's grab the rectangular marquee tool. Go to the next square. Same thing. Just drag from corner to corner in one of these areas that selects that. Let's choose our next color here and then paint bucket. Fill that one. Let's just deselect. Back to the rectangular marquee tool. And you just continue doing this clear along the whole image. Right now I'm just going clear across the top here on the colors to make things fast and easy. There we go. Deselect. Back to. You can see how it's fairly straightforward but there are simply a lot of squares to fill in. There we go, and deselect that. The first row, you can just go straight across on these. That's okay, that'll actually work out for you. And we'll fill this one in. Once you get past the first row, you have to then begin making decisions on what you want to have in there. Got our magenta. There we go, and deselect. So once you have your first row of colors in, you then go down and begin making some options. Let's do just a couple more down here on this, get the idea. Now if you have the snap selected up here under view and snap to and guides, you can then just be close to your lines and it will then snap to right to those guidelines, making it real easy to create that little spot, that little selection. Now what I do as I get into the layer, additional levels down here on this grid, is I'll pick a color that isn't really close to the ones that it's right next to. So maybe a blue would be nice down here. I'll just use a different blue. I'll use that one. And let's fill that in. Deselect. We'll do one more here. Same exact thing. So here's a blue, yellow, green. So maybe a magenta-ish, purple-ish maybe. So I'll go for a purple right down here. And fill that in. And then select and deselect. So it's just a matter of filling in the grid, just like this, just kind of work your way down and 
try not to put matching colors right next to each other. Just kind of, you know, bounce things around. Use some of the pastel colors. Use some of the darker colors down here. Even use some of the browns if you want to. You know, that's all fine. I'd stay away from the grays. You don't have to use the grays in here. You may want to do some whites. It will just change the value of the cell. It won't change the colors if you do that one. So you create this grid work pattern. Let me bring back up the other image over here. Get that closed. And let's hide everything else except for just this layer. And I'll change this to normal. So there's the final grid that I made. Notice it's just a, a whole bunch of colors in here. I stayed mostly with the light colors, but there are some more pastel colors here and here and there. Those are pastels. That's kind of a pastel. That's my darker colors are down in here. But I just wanted to just bounce around a little bit and try to keep things from being right next to each other. See, so there's two blues, but they're light and dark. And then blues are kind of spaced around. It has some whites in there. This gives me value change as opposed to coloration change. You can use white or not if you want to. It's up to you. So there we go. That's the basic concept. You simply build that grid just like that. Once you have the grid finished, you then go on to the next steps. Now to save some time here on this one video, I'm just going to copy this grid layer just like that. Let's just drag that over. Let me cancel that, just minimize that one. And let's get this thing fitting in place. So there's the grid. Okay, back to our tool options. Now we have the grid on here. At this point, you can change this to a soft light. And you get that kind of nice coloration. There it is. There's the basic coloration already done. You can choose different versions in here, different looks. Overlay has a much stronger look to it. You can see why I wanted to have the eyes and the nose and the mouth in kind of in their own squares. Here's a hard light look. Here's a color burn look. So you can play around with these and use different looks if you want to. The one I'm using though is the soft light look. At this point in the process, we now can take a look at the values of our black and white and color. So right now we're looking at the black and white here. Let's hide the color. It's in behind. Let's do an adjustment layer on this. So layer, new adjustment layer and levels. Make sure you check use previous layer to create clipping mask. That just links this into that just that one layer. And let's bring our blacks up. There we go. Notice we lose a lot of value in here with the color overlay. So I'm bringing those values back in again with the levels control. Let's bring our whites in a bit. This increases the contrast a little bit. And then you can kind of adjust your mid-tones until it looks nice. It looks like that's pretty good for this one. Okay, let's do the same thing now with the color in behind. There's our color layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, and levels again. Again, make sure this is checked. Choose OK. Bring up our blacks. Bring the whites in a little bit for more contrast. And this is darken the whole picture down just a touch. And that looks pretty good. So there's the basic coloration for this thing. The last step we'll be doing is to use our layer masks down here actually to block out some of these to allow either to show or hide colors and to show or hide the full color view down below. We'll do that as a final step. So here we're looking at the black and white. We'll be mostly leaving the black and white as our main color source in here, as our main image source with the color version up there applying color to the black and white. We'll then show through some of the color. But before we do that, let's do two more things. Let's put our grid lines on top of this. And I'm going to back out just a touch. Grab the zoom tool here, hold the Alt key down, and then let's click to go out just one touch, just like that. Go up here to the top layer. This is our color grid layer. And then come over here to the draw section and grab the line tool. And that's that one right there. I have mine set at 10 pixels. Let's reset our colors here to black and white and then invert those. So you want white showing right there. You want no arrowhead showing here, nothing 
especially here, no style. So there's line, 10 pixels, and white, no arrow hits. Now all we have to do is just go down every single one of these lines, vertical and then horizontal, to create our white lines. Now we still have snap on, which means that I can just click on the top of the line here. So I can, I can pull my line around, and we'll kind of snap right onto that vertical line. Makes it real easy. And let's just go through and do one of these for every single one of these vertical lines. Just like that. And then we'll go back and we'll do one for every single one of the horizontal lines. There we go. If you look over here, notice that these are coming in as individual shape layers. We'll merge all those together once we get the lines in place. So let's do our horizontal lines now. There we go. Pull those straight across. And almost through. We'll then have all of our lines set up. Now, the top line up here, shape 14, that should be selected. It's the last one that you did. The reason it's 14 is because we have seven lines vertical and seven lines horizontal. It gives us 14 shapes. Now with the top shape selected, let's scroll down and find shape number one, which is right here. Hold the shift key down. Click on shape one. That selects all the shapes. Right click where one of the names are and then merge shapes. And then brings them all down just to that one. Now you can double click on the name and then it just calls one lines. Now if I hide the guides and that's view Uncheck guides, hides the guides. Let's come down here to the background layer and there are the white guides. Let's just zoom in so we have a nice white grid line here, just like that, right on top of where the guides were. And there it is. So there's without and there it is with. Okay, the next thing is to just put in a few white squares in here just for interest's sake. Let's bring our, our lines back up again. So I'll bring the guides up. There we go. And I'll click on the layer 2 again right here and then make a new layer which goes right above the currently selected layer so that becomes layer 3 right above the color layer. Make sure your color is white. Grab the rectangular marquee tool and let's just drop in some white squares just for variation. I'll just choose this one right here and fill that with white. There we go. And deselect back to our tool. Now I'm looking for squares that don't really have any real important information in them. Like that's just kind of straight here. I could do this one or I could do this one right up here. That's not too bad. Fill that in. And then let's deselect. Let's put one over here somewhere. Maybe right there. I'm just kind of placing these just around I don't want too many of these, just a few. Maybe that's not too bad. Right there, we'll fill that one. And we'll do one over here somewhere. Maybe right there is a good spot. There we go. And I want one more down here someplace. I don't want to be right below that one. I already did it right below on this one. So let's just put this one right here. And they were just kind of spreading those around. And now just looking at this and thinking about this compositionally, I think I might want to have one more right down in the bottom right hand corner this time. So I'll just do this one as a white square as well. That feels pretty good. That's about the right amount of squares. Okay, so we have our white squares. We have our white lines in there. Let's now just look at some of the coloration on this. I'm going to hide the white and the lines and go back to our color. Now if you want to have a square that is black and white, you can do that easily enough. Let's come down here to our black and white layer. And we'll put a layer mask on this. There we go. Let's go to the color squares layer our color grid layer and a layer mask on this one. So I want to have a square that's just black and white 
all I have to do now is to put a black square on the layer mask for the color that hides that one colored square and we'll just see the black and white through that one colored square. Let's see how that works. Let's do the mouth down here. I'll do this as black and white. So I'll select that square, that, that rectangle in here. And of course we're doing that because we have our grid line still showing. You're on the layer mask for the coloration. Look for that light blue outline. And then using black, grab the paint bucket and just fill that in. That hides the color and it shows the black and white underneath. Let's say I wanted to have this eye in full color, which is down further. I'll need to do this twice. So let's grab our selection, make sure you're deselected, and let's select this eye right here. Let's first hide the color on this one, just like that. So we're seeing the black and white, but I also want to hide the black and white. So same thing, double click over here, so you see the light blue outline around the layer mask, and let's fill that again. There we go. So now we're seeing the color in behind. So if you want to see the color layer, you need two squares, one up here on the color grid and one on the black and white. Then you're seeing the color layer through all those layers. Let's put full color right here. And I'll just grab that. There we go. So for full color, same thing, up to the color layer. And let's fill that one with black, down to the layer mask for the black and white layer, fill it again, and there's full color for that grid. We're now seeing this down here. So you want to have some squares around here that are just black and white and some squares that are full color. I'll do the full color first. Let's just grab a little bit of her shoulder right down here, I think. I'll do that piece. Back up to the color grid. Let's fill that. Back to the black and white grid, fill that. There's full color right there. And let's do a full color over here on the hair somewhere. I think maybe this one might be nice. Or maybe this one right there. I'll do that one. So I'll just grab the our tool here, the rectangular marquee tool, back to the color. Fill that with black. That hides the color. Come down to the color version. Make sure you're still seeing the outline around the layer mask. Click it again. And there's full color down here. Okay, that takes care of our full color. There's four of those showing full color. Let's do a couple more here of the blacks. The black and white is done with just the color being removed. So let's put a few more of those in. Let's do a black and white, oh, right over here somewhere, maybe right there. And let's fill that. Again, I'm on the layer mask. That's black and white. And let's find something on the left-hand side. Let's do this one right here. Select that and fill that. That's black and white. You can just make a few of these around black and white, a few of these full color, and then leave the rest of them just colorized black and white. And that's really all there is to it. Let's just deselect that. There we go. Bring your white ones back in again. Bring the lines back in. And there is that basic look. Now, if you want to make changes on the overall feeling of this, it's easy to do. Do it all right here on the color layer. You can change the layer mode again here, the overlay mode, or hard light mode, or linear. Or you can go darker. Here's a color burn. There's a multiply look. Again, lots of options in here to give you lots of different effects. But we'll stick with the soft light for this video right there. You also can tone down the colors if you want to just by lowering the opacity of this particular layer. So bring the opacity down and you get a subtler color effect. That's 61 percent. And I'll put that back up to real bright color. Let's bring this down maybe I think to 90 percent. So it's just a little bit less color, not too much. And let's hide those guides. And there it is. Let's now just float this and I'll zoom in and we'll see how this looks. So there we go. That's how to do this color mosaic effect on a portrait. Again, as you can see, the only 
real hard part, and so the part that takes all the time, is just to make that grid. And it's just because you have 64 little squares to fill in, and it just takes a little while to do that. Once that's done, it all goes relatively quickly. So there it is. That's how to do the multicolor mosaic portrait. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.